I'm Paul Levinson, and welcome to Light on Light Through, episode 299, my review of The Man Who Fell to Earth, episode 1.4, and how cool and meta-perfect was The Man Who Fell to Earth new series on Showtime in episode 1.4, just up last night. Well, we learn that Thomas Newton, who came to Earth all those years ago in the 1976 movie starring David Bowie in the role, lost his memory or most of it, including of his wife back on Althea, way out there in outer space. And in episode 1.4, Newton, now played by Bill Nighy, tells Faraday in a little hovering ball of a recording made as his memory was fading, Tell my wife I love her very much. That's right, the very same request that Major Tom made to his listeners in David Bowie's 1969 iconic space oddity recording. Ain't Jenny so cool? Well, not only Jenny Lume, but Alex Kurtzman, Jane Maggs, who wrote the story Lume and Kurtzman, made into the teleplay for this episode, and everyone who has put this unique sequel series together. Bowie's presence and essence has been integrated into this new series from the very first episode, which was entitled Hello Space Boy, just a comma more in that title than David Bowie's 1995 song, Hello Space Boy. At this point in the series, I've got to say I can't think of a better, more multivalent TV series sequel to a movie. And we get some important Justin backstory in this episode. She invented a cold fusion process, an incredible achievement that duly impresses Faraday, but she paid for it with the loss of her daughter's father, who died of radiation poisoning. Along with Newton's loss of memory, this was one of the two most powerful heart tugs of the episode. Spencer has another night of flexing his CIA muscle, but the high point is his encounter with Mary Lou, another memorable character from the 1976 movie played back then by Candy Clark. She and Newton shared a love of sorts, and in his absence, she's become Sister Mary Lou, now played by Juliet Stevenson. Spencer's conversation with her was his best moment, I thought, so far in the series. But, you know, I could have done without the bee in her mouth. The Man Who Fell to Earth continues to be one of the most refreshingly original science fiction shows on television. And that's quite an accomplishment, given that the series is a sequel but it draws you into its spider web to the point that you're really feeling, on a visceral level, the interstellar interplay that's at the heart of this story. I'll see you back here next week with my next review, episode 1.5 of The Man Who Fell to Earth. And I hope you enjoyed that review of episode 1.4 of The Man Who Fell to Earth. I'll indeed see you back here next week with my review of episode 1.5. Before then, I'll have a review of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, the first two episodes, and a review of the new series, The Time Traveler's Wife, the first episode of which just went up yesterday on HBO. I saw it. I liked it a lot. You'll have a review from me soon. In the meantime, stay safe, stay sound, and continue doing whatever you can to help those brave people in Ukraine get those Russian invaders totally out of their country.
The Light on Light Through Podcast. Athens, 2042 AD. She ripped the paper in half, then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left again into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Sierra Waters had read once that, years ago, it was thought that men made love for the thrill, while women made love for the sense of connection it gave them. Curled up with a good book says, Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot to Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. Paul Levinson still codes about an ancient biotech war raging on in secret for centuries.